we have talked about equipartition theorem. Uh, now, let us talk about another one uh, which is uh, very important, it is called as a virial theorem. And we will see that uh, how virial theorem is important uh, both in classical and quantum uh, mechanics. And uh, uh, we will do it uh, from two perspectives. So, one is uh, we will do thermodynamics of gravitating objects and then we will uh, shift over to uh, statistical mechanics and uh, uh, do uh, these for or derive the virial theorem for uh, the classical ideal gas and maybe for harmonic oscillator as well. And uh, we will also uh, uh, do a generalization of the canonical ensemble by allowing um, the systems to uh, exchange particle or the particle numbers uh, to be a variable among them, which is um, a more realistic scenario than the canonical ensemble. So, let us uh, write down virial theorem. So, So, we will have to define what is a virial, this uh, word may be new to you to at least some of you. And um, uh, it states uh, basically it, it tries to find a relationship uh, between average kinetic energy, um, let us call it as k and average potential energy uh, v. Okay? And uh, you see that this is uh, quite useful because the total energy is the sum of the kinetic and the potential energies and if we know the relationship the average relationship uh, of uh, these k and v or even in quantum physics which is known as the expectation value of the kinetic energy and the potential energy. Uh, then we know that how the energy is actually distributed between the kinetic and potential energies in a system. And uh, see these things uh, at least in uh, say for example, quantum mechanics is not so easy to calculate because uh, say for example, in hydrogen atom if you want to know the, um, the expectation value of the kinetic energy and the or the potential energy, uh, it is uh, quite uh, difficult because these are the wave functions that we would need for calculating the expectation values. They are uh, log wire polynomials and some uh, exponentially decaying function or say for example, in harmonic oscillator. Um, it is uh, uh, the Hermite polynomials and a Gaussian. So, a general relationship for the nth eigenfunction if you have to calculate these expectation values of kinetic and potential energies between uh, the uh, general wave function, it can be quite uh, uh, daunting in terms of its mathematical complexity. So, this uh, straight away gives an example uh, or rather establishes a relationship between k and v. So, let us do it for uh, gravitational bodies, uh, let us call it gravitational objects and derive this relation and see that uh, what it gives or what the uh, was the relationship between uh, average kinetic energy and average potential energy. Uh, to do that, uh, we will have to define a variable, but for that uh, we let us uh, define the moment of inertia. So, this is moment of inertia and this all of you are familiar in classical mechanics and this is equal to i equal to 1 to n for say n point objects it is uh, r i um, and you have uh, this square. So, there is a general definition of moment of inertia all of you are familiar with this and this is m i into r i dot r i and i of course, goes from 1 to n. So, this is the definition of moment of inertia and uh, the time uh, derivative of this moment of inertia is called as a virial. So, we will define virial and uh, there is a slight adjustment that is done uh, to uh, include a factor of 2 uh, in the denominator. So, uh, virial is defined as virial. Um, we will use another um, symbol for defining virial when we do uh, for this classical gas and so on uh, or the oscillator, but nevertheless they mean the same thing. We will use symbol like this 
or we, you can use a symbol like this or they just mean the same thing. So, this is half of d i d t is called as the virial ok and we will see that uh, whether you write it in terms of this curly v or you write it in terms of uh, q um, and then the final expression for the virial would just be um, identical in all these cases which they should be. So, this d i d t is equal to sum over i um, and uh, there is uh, i from 1 to n and we have a p i dot r i ok. So, because both of them give you a p i dot r i and we have taken a half. So, this uh, factor of 2 goes away and we get a, a v real equal to p i uh, dot r i where p i is the momentum of the individual particles. All right. So, then uh, what do we do is uh, for deriving this theorem, uh, we will use uh, the time derivative of this which is uh, dq dt which is equal to. Uh, so, we have a chain rule that needs to be applied and we have a i equal to 1 to n and you have a dp i dt uh, dot r i plus uh, p i I am sorry plus i equal to 1 to n a p i dot a v i ok. Um, v i is nothing but uh, d r i d t and uh, if we use uh, Newton's second law Uh, we get uh, f i is equal to d p i d t ok. So, this is uh, will be used on the first term in the right and uh, we can write down this time derivative of the virial equal to f i dot uh, r i plus um, now, this uh, p i is equal to nothing but uh, m i v i. So, this is nothing but m i v i square ok. So, uh, we have this time derivative of the virial gives you two expressions uh, on the right that is uh, f i dot r i and m i uh, v i square. Now, this is a simple term which is nothing but twice of the kinetic energy and uh, will not worry too much about it till we arrive at the last stage and uh, so we will uh, uh, this as a kinetic energy and at times is also written uh, with a T ok. In some books they write it with a T, uh, but they mean the same thing. So, now uh, consider a two body interaction. And in fact, it is very important to understand that anything uh, larger than two bodies, it is uh, very difficult to handle and most of the time it is not possible to uh, handle three body interactions. And um, so, ideally we whenever we talk about interacting systems, uh, which we will do towards the end, it is always a two body interaction, either it is two particle interacting via Coulomb interaction or uh, there are two spins which are interacting via some um, Ising or Heisenberg kind of interaction. Anything larger than that is difficult to handle though there are um, you know uh, I mean uh, spin systems we talk about uh, Gilles and Schemuria which is like a three body interaction or there are other uh, in other things there are uh, there are ways to you know handle this, but it is not very common one and secondly it is uh, most of the time uh, they are not relevant. Uh, so, we stick to a two body interaction and uh, let us talk about a uh, you know a gravitational interaction which uh, now uh, we will talk about this two body interaction as some f i j and understanding that it is the force um, on i th particle. Uh, due to j 
due to jth particle. So, the first term can be written as uh, sum over i from 1 to n and uh, this is uh, uh, there is another sum from uh, j which is not equal to i um, and there is a f i j dotted with r i. Okay. So, now what I do is that I um, uh, sort of uh, consider that there are two body interaction. Um, we write interaction, but here we are writing it as a force. So, which means that uh, this two body interaction gives rise to a force and uh, most likely for a conservative case this uh, force and interaction are related by a negative gradient that is a force is equal to negative gradient of a potential. And uh, so, this is a, a two body force in, in that sense, uh, so which is what we have written here and uh, this f i j uh, dot r i. So, we will have to this j has to be anything but i which means that it is different than um, i and because a uh, body cannot interact with itself at least in this sense. Okay. So, this is uh, say for example and we are really doing it for a gravitational force. Okay. So, this f i j is a gravitational force. So, this is the assumption that we have in this present case and um, so, uh, this j not equal to i I think is clear, but then we can write this term as uh, sum over i from 1 to n um, and this is j uh, less than i f i j dot r i and another term which is uh, i equal to 1 to n uh, j uh, greater than i f i j dot r i. I think it is clear because j is not equal to i. So, I take all the j's which are less than i as this uh, term and uh, all the j's which are greater than i as this term and let me write this as a and b terms these are a and b. It is uh, quite uh, obvious that f i j is a n cross n matrix. For all i n j to run from 1 to n. Okay. So, uh, we can write this as uh, this is your say n cross n matrix and we write uh, i in this direction and we write j in this direction. So, uh, if you write down the diagonal. So, this um, f i j will not have any diagonal elements where i equal to j because a particle cannot interact or cannot exert a force on itself. Uh, so, we have um, all these terms which are the first term which are j less than i would be represented in the uh, lower diagonal that is uh, the lower block in the uh, lower to the diagonal and um, this is in the upper diagonal. So, b is a term that represents upper diagonal and uh, we where j is greater than i. Okay. So, uh, once we uh, have you know uh, written this down, let us uh, work with this uh, b term which is uh, uh, I mean you can work with either, uh, but we will just uh, uh, take b for example and then manipulate it and write it um, such that it looks similar to A and can be combined in some sense. Let, let me see uh, uh, how we can do that. So, there is a i from 1 to n and now this is like a f i j sum over j which is greater than i and dotted with r i. Now, what I do is there is a crucial step. I interchange the i and j indices. Okay. Uh, this does not cause any harm uh, to the discussion that we are undertaking. Uh, the reason is that that these i's and j's are all dummy indices. So, we can write this as um, uh, in the sense that I can still write it as i equal to 1 to n and I write a j uh, less than i and I can write it as a f j i and then dotted with r i. So, we have what we have done is that interchanging 
i and j and because of that the j greater than 1 term has now been written as j greater than i term is written as j less than i okay just a small uh, manipulation that is done now you see that newton's third law comes into picture which says that uh, f i j equal to minus f j i okay so this equal and opposite uh, force uh, acting on a pair of bodies and uh, then uh, my b can be written as um, sum over 1 to n uh, j uh, less than i and f i j dot dotted with r j ok. Uh, let me see whether uh, there is a mistake that I have made this should be j because I have changed r and i and j all right. Sorry about that. So, uh, this is equal to minus f i j uh, r j. Now, I can combine um, a and b which gives me this um, f i dot r i which is uh, one term in the uh, derivative of the virial. Uh, this is equal to uh, f i dot r i equal to which was like a plus b. Uh, now, this is like a sum over i equal to 1 to n uh, j less than i for both the terms I have a f i j dot r i and a minus uh, sum over i equal to 1 to n and a j uh, less than i f i j um, dot r j and I can now combine the two terms. Um, and write this down as uh, see uh, the first term is uh, i from 1 to n. So, whether you write uh, i to be equal to j it really does not matter I mean in the sense that these both these are dummy indices they both go from 1 to n with the only constraint that um, they are uh, not uh, this j is not equal to i and so it is either greater than i or less than i that is why this uh, sum in b which appears uh, here uh, we do not change this uh, this index that you see here. So, this still remains as i so I will write it here. Okay. So, uh, once we uh, get this then we can just uh, combine both the terms which is i equal to 1 to n uh, j less than i for both the terms and I have f i j for both the terms and this is r i minus r j. Now, uh, you, you can introduce the shorthand notation where you write r i j equal to r i minus r j in all the gravitational problems or electromagnetic problems this uh, notation is used. So, I can write this as i equal to 1 to n uh, j less than i f i j uh, and r i j vector ok, uh, where r i j is a vector that connects i and j. Now, uh, take f i j to be equal to the gravitational uh, force. Okay. So, uh, f i j to be equal to g m i m j divided by r i j cube uh, r i j vector. This is a usual form that you all are familiar with this Newton's law of gravitation where uh, two masses m i and m j uh, they uh, experience a force among them as g m i uh, m j divided by r i j cube uh, and this uh, the uh, force takes place in a direction uh, uh, this uh, line joining uh, from a to i to j. All right, so uh, we can go back to our original uh, term which is f i dot um, r i uh, this is equal to nothing but uh, uh, minus uh, g um, this m i m j divided by r i j um, cube 
and then there is a R i j uh, uh, dot R i j right because uh, this uh, this R i is now this is equal to uh, this is equal to f i j dot R i j. So, f i j is this now they will another R i j. So, that makes it R i j square. Now, this will cancel and I get what I get is uh, I get a, a term uh, which is equal to the uh, potential. So, this is the potential and this can be written as i equal to 1 to n um, and there is a j that is uh, less than i and this is nothing but equal to v i j. Okay. And um, so, this is uh, the term that we have and uh, along with that we also have a uh, potential energy. Okay. Um, so, uh, this is uh, R i minus R j um, and uh, so, this there is a term. Uh, so, this is R i minus R j that is fine. So, this is that R i j equal to R i minus R j and uh, we uh, have this uh, potential term as this. And um, so, uh, your d q d t that is time derivative of the virial is now uh, the total potential energy plus twice the kinetic energy that is what we have derived. So, this is d q d t and the theorem demands Uh, for long time, uh, long times, the time average of dQ dt is equal to zero. Okay, so what we uh, mean is that uh, so if you have a dQ dt average, which is nothing but one over t. 0 to t uh, d q d t d t this should be equal to 0 for t large. Okay. Uh, ideally means t going to infinity. What I mean is that uh, the equilibrium value of this derivative of the virial has to vanish and that is what the theorem uh, demands. Okay. So, if that is true, uh, then we have uh, if we take the derivative uh, uh, not uh, derivative, but the uh, average over long time. So, this is equal to uh, 2 k equal to 0 and that gives us a very important result that v is equal to minus of 2 k. And uh, this is a result that is valid. Uh, for the gravitational force. Now, this result uh, does not hold good for other uh, you know interaction terms. Now, if uh, you need to find it for other interaction terms such as so this is 1 over r or this can be written as a k is equal to minus half of uh, v. Okay. And uh, for other interactions say for example, uh, what will it be for uh, say the harmonic oscillator or is it really uh, valid for only for interacting systems or it is also valid for non-interacting systems. We will see this uh, result, but before that uh, we just want to make a few comments. The comment is that that uh, this is, uh, so this is these are comments. One is that uh, the result is shown for gravitational field or gravitational force or gravitational interaction, let us call it a gravitational interaction, uh, but true for true for all other interactions. So, we state a, a simple uh, result without a proof that actually if you have a v going as some constant into some r to the power alpha, uh, then the relationship between uh, k and v uh, is alpha by 2 into, uh, so k is equal to average value of k equal to alpha by 2 into v. Uh, see here alpha equal to minus 1, 
so we got it as uh, k equal to uh, minus uh, half of v and uh, so if you have uh, v uh, is equal to say r to the power square uh, which is the case for harmonic oscillator uh, in that case we will have a k to be equal to um, v and this is another known problem uh, in classical mechanics that the average value of kinetic energy and the average value of uh, potential energy is uh, uh, they are same and in fact this is also the statement of equipartition theorem because equipartition theorem says that uh, energy is equally partitioned uh, at a given temperature T at equilibrium uh, between all the harmonic degrees of freedom. So, you have one harmonic degree of freedom as the kinetic energy which is P square and the other harmonic uh, degree of freedom is the potential energy which goes as x square or r square and uh, so there uh, this thing uh, should be valid as well. Okay. So, this is one uh, comment and then second comment is that uh, results are equally valid. for uh, classical and quantum physics which means that uh, if you want to go to hydrogen atom and uh, where the potential is again V equal to C divided by R the Coulomb potential uh, between the electron in the outermost orbit and the uh, nucleus which contains a proton. So, uh, this is of the form, uh, so there is a minus sign there, we have ignored this minus sign, uh, but uh, we just uh, interested with this uh, dependence of uh, uh, V and on the on the positional coordinate or the configurational coordinates. So, this is uh, C over R, so we have the same result as the, so this for hydrogen atom. Uh, so, this k is equal to minus half of v uh, again as you have uh, for uh, this, uh, so this harmonic oscillator and this result is again same as the gravitational object and it should be because uh, the nature of the potential is this inverse uh, 1 over r or the force is inverse square law. Okay. Now, just uh, imagine for a moment, I mean if you have to calculate the expectation value of the kinetic energy between any arbitrary state of the hydrogen atom which contains uh, a log wire polynomial and uh, these, uh, uh, these exponential minus uh, alpha r kind of term uh, and then trying to do this would require you to do a lot of mathematics in order to get this uh, values, but we without doing any calculation we have uh, this k equal to um, uh, minus half of v and also k plus v is equal to the energy of the system which in this case is uh, minus 13.6 by n square. Okay. So, uh, we have this relation between k and v and we also have another relation between k and v. So, we can calculate these uh, values, uh, these expectation values of kinetic and potential energies without uh, any problem. All right. So, uh, these two are the comments about uh, this uh, virial theorem. Now, let us uh, go to uh, statistical mechanics, uh, not that uh, these all these things that we have said are not valid, but we just want to uh, go to a classical gas or uh, go to an oscillator which are systems that we have been considering uh, extensively for this course. Okay. So, what is the definition of virial once again will uh, the definition of virial would not vary, but however written with a different in a different notation. So, this is equal to the R i and this is the uh, the force that you see which is P i dot and the expectation value of this is uh, called as a virial. So, it is the uh, uh, expectation value of the sum of the products of 
products of um, QI which are the configurational coordinates and the forces acting on the system uh, PI dot which means the forces acting on particles of the system. All right, so this is the definition of that and um, now this uh, from the equipartition theorem we know that this is uh, really uh, let me do it one more time, but let me just uh, state the result. So, this is q i uh, p i dot a minus 3 n k t I have not written it in this form, but I will uh, do it. Uh, so, uh, let me do it here um, in this particular form that so uh, that will require uh, me to derive. So, this is nothing but the equipartition theorem this will uh, need me to derive the equipartition uh, theorem in terms of the virial. Okay. So, uh, let us you know uh, in a simple uh, case let us consider uh, the Hamiltonian of the system. to be a function of the uh, q and p okay, which are written earlier and uh, then you consider what is the average value of this and x j. Now, you might wonder this uh, from q and p I am going to um, x i and x j. So, x i and x j can be any of the 6 n coordinates. What I mean is that uh, they uh, may not only be uh, the positional coordinates or the configurational coordinates, they can also be the momenta coordinates. So, these x i and x j can take values uh, anything between q 1 to q 3 n and p 1 to p 3 n. Okay. So, that is the understanding and um, if we want to calculate the expectation value of this, we know that in, uh, in the classical statistical mechanics we are going to uh, weight it uh, with the Boltzmann factor. So, this is nothing but uh, the expectation value of this quantity is minus infinity to plus infinity and all these x i uh, del h del uh, x j e to the power minus beta h h is the Hamiltonian uh, it is written here do not uh, uh, mix it up with uh, magnetic field which is not uh, present here anyway. So, this is uh, a d cube uh, q 1 uh, to d cube q uh, n uh, uh, just doing it in one dimension for simplicity, but it can be just written as uh, in three dimension as well. So, d q p n and divided by an integral of this exponential minus beta h and then you write the same thing d cube q 1 all the way up to d cube q n and d cube p 1 equal to d cube p n. Okay. So, we write it in 1 d but really it can be if you write it as 3 n it will just uh, go over to the uh, 3 dimension. So, once again uh, we have to perform this uh, integral that is there specifically on the numerator and the way we do it is that we use integration by parts. And um, what do you take as first function and second function? So, you take the first function as x i and the second function v as um, you know uh, del h del x j exponential minus beta h. So, this is the first function and this is the second function. And what is the formula that we use there? So, we use uh, u v d x is equal to u integral v d x 
minus du dx integral v dx whole dx. Okay. So, uh, now you have identified what is uh, u and what is b uh, sorry v and then uh, we can do this uh, quantity which is equal to x i del h del x j uh, this would give us. So, the uh, uh, we are just simply doing the integral uh, of the numerator. So, the denominator is not uh, important because the denominator would give us equal to 1 because that is the normalized probability uh, for a system uh, you know I mean uh, with beta as 1 over t or k t uh, that is the normalized probability. So, we simply need to calculate this quantity uh, the numerator. Uh, so, this is minus infinity to plus infinity and we have 1 over beta uh, with a minus sign here. Um, please uh, do it carefully and you should get this result and e to the power minus beta h. So, that is uh, uh, your integral v dx and uh, this is from uh, x j equal to uh, minus infinity to x j variable to be plus infinity okay? and uh, plus uh, 1 over beta and uh, there is a del x i del x j that is the second term and there is a e to the power minus beta h uh, d x j and then what we do is that we will write it as d cube uh, q j d cube p j. Now, I uh, will write a prime here uh, and a prime here uh, with the understanding that uh, the d x j is not included. Uh, so, d x j uh, that coordinate is not included and once again I remind you that d x j the x j coordinate uh, does not necessarily mean that we are talking about positional coordinate. We can talk about it as a momentum coordinate also. So, any of the p 1 to p n it could be there we will just see it in a moment that this x j is just a dummy index. So, x d x j is excluded from this integral because you have already written a dxj inside this uh, square bracket. Now, you see uh, the first term really uh, goes to 0 because um, at the extremum coordinates of uh, the Hamiltonian really uh, becomes very large. Okay? So, the Hamiltonian diverges at these uh, plus infinity and minus infinity of one of the coordinates because uh, this h is a function of p and q. So, uh, this x j can be either p or q uh, and uh, this goes to 0 because of that because exponential minus beta h goes to 0. So, we are left with one term only and uh, this term is nothing but delta i j. So, you are taking a, a derivative of x i with respect to uh, x j and uh, unless i equal to j this would vanish. So, we are left with a term this is equal to 1 over beta delta i j and then of course, all these uh, uh, these terms which are exponential beta h uh, d cube q 1 uh, to d cube q n uh, and d cube p 1 to d cube p n. Now, your d x j is included, so, all coordinates are included. And this is nothing but equal to 1, this whole thing is equal to 1 because it is a normalized probability. So, what we get for this uh, expectation value? This is simply nothing but equal to uh, 1 over beta. So, uh, x i del h del x j is nothing but equal to 1 over beta uh, delta i j which is equal to delta i j into k t and uh, so this is the result that we get for this uh, for this virial and uh, now let us take uh, x i equal to x j. So, case 1 uh, x i equal to x j equal to p i that is all these coordinates are 
uh, x i and x j both are uh, all are momentum coordinates. So, then we can write it as p i del h del p i is equal to p i and del h del p i as you know is equal to q i dot. So, this is equal to uh, k t okay, because we have taken i equal to j. Uh, so case 2, uh, so x i and x j both are equal to q i. So, we have q i del h del q i, this is equal to q i and uh, del h del q i is minus p i dot. So, this is p i dot, this is equal to k t once again. Now, you see this is the virial that you have uh, seen earlier that is a sum over i from 1 to 3 n and you have uh, sorry 3 n and this is like f i dot r i. Okay? That is the virial that we have been talking about when we uh, uh, talked about or discussed this uh, gravitating bodies. So, um, if you go over to three dimension, this means that we will have, uh, so let me write it here. In 3D, we can do it and uh, we can get this um, sum over i uh, p i uh, del h del p i um, equal to it is writing it once again um, uh, yes I mean this thing should have been inside. So, this is inside. So, this is equal to p i q i dot which is equal to 3 n k t and similarly uh, you have uh, sum over i q i del h del q i this is equal to minus of q i p i dot um, and this is equal to 3 n k t once again. So, that tells uh, that each harmonic degree of freedom gives you uh, this n k t uh, the two harmonic degrees of freedom p square plus q square because h is explicitly taken as a function of q and p and uh, so this equipartition theorem is proved um, using uh, the using virial. Okay. So, that tells us that uh, they are consistent with each other and uh, we get uh, these nice results uh, that the energy is equally partitioned uh, between each harmonic degree of freedom. It is one of the um, cornerstone results in uh, statistical mechanics. Let me do it for a gas, um, classical ideal gas. And that tells us that uh, you can write this again as I said that. Uh, so, you see that here what we have written without a proof that q i p i dot equal to minus 3 n k t that is proved here um, is equal to q i p i dot sum over i is equal to minus 3 n k t. Okay. So, uh, once again as I said that uh, use this uh, as a virial definition of a virial which is nothing but uh, q i f i um, and uh, this is equal to um, now this f i is nothing but equal to uh, p uh, d s or d s is the area. So, for a gas uh, which is enclosed in a container, uh, so this is the, the piston that you have and so there is a gas there. 
So, the force that is there is entirely due to the pressure and this uh, pressure is nothing but, um, so the force is equal to minus P d s and um, uh, the reason that we have written a minus sign is that uh, the P is acting downward here uh, and uh, the, so that is uh, the pressure due to the piston and d s which is the surface area that is acting um, upward. And so, we have uh, there is this uh, sign mutual sign between them and this is equal to minus p and then there is a s and then there is a r dot d s. So, r is nothing but q i and f is written as p uh, d s and so on. So, r is the uh, position vector of the particles in the, uh, in the gas which are in the vicinity of the wells that you see. Okay. So, uh, this is nothing but uh, equal to minus p uh, and we can p is the pressure. Okay. So, this is the pressure as we said. Uh, now, this uh, we can use uh, divergence theorem to convert it into a, a divergence of r dv. Okay. Um, and uh, divergence of r is nothing but 3 because in 3 spatial direction uh, we can write it as uh, i d d x um, plus i cap d d x plus i cap d d y or you can write it as del del y uh, j cap del del y and k cap d d del del z dotted with um, x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap and this is nothing but equal to 3. So, this is equal to 3. Okay. So, this becomes equal to minus 3 P V. So, virial uh, for a classical ideal gas, virial P V okay. and uh, uh, if we use uh, this relation the one that is here, uh, here the last relation where uh, we have taken uh, h to be only a function of q uh, or rather uh, uh, only a function of one uh, uh, coordinate not uh, it may not be uh, uh, q uh, I mean in, in this particular case it is uh, a p that is momentum. Uh, so, uh, if we uh, compare between the two, we get a, a minus 3 P V equal to minus 3 N K T and then uh, we get this as the P V equal to N K T which is the uh, equation of state for the gas. Okay. And uh, the internal energy is of course, uh, purely kinetic and uh, the virial is nothing but equal to minus 2 uh, the kinetic energy. So, this purely kinetic. So, we are talking about classical ideal gas, there is no interaction between them. So, what we have done is that uh, we have derived two very important theorems in statistical mechanics, the equipartition theorem and the virial theorem. The equipartition theorem says uh, at an equilibrium temperature T, how uh, the energy is partitioned between various uh, harmonic degrees of freedom and it says that it is equally partitioned. Okay? And uh, hence, we have done a virial theorem which establishes a relationship between the average kinetic energy and average potential energy and is equally valid for an interacting system, so pairwise interacting system which we are mostly familiar with. In that context, we have shown this result to be uh, valid for uh, you know uh, this uh, gravitational system and then uh, you can also write it for the harmonic oscillator and uh, get this you know uh, this relationship between the average value of V and the average kinetic energy. And we have explained that how this result can be very useful in uh, determining uh, the relationship between uh, you know the average uh, quantities, average energies uh, in a quantum mechanical system 
where uh, the a general wave function uh, for the say the nth uh, state or nth wave function of uh, the electron in a hydrogen atom can be quite complicated in terms of its polynomials and multiplied by some exponential functions or even in harmonic oscillator. But this theorem that is a virial theorem gives you a very nice and crisp uh, relationship between uh, k and v or t and v if you like to call it. All right. So, uh, let us go over to uh, grand canonical distribution. or grand canonical ensemble. Uh, the way it is different than the canonical ensemble is the following. Uh, just like energy was not a measurable quantity and we have allowed uh, the system, our system to exchange energies with the surrounding and come to an equilibrium, a uh, number of particles of a system is again not a measurable quantity and let us allow. Uh, this flexibility of our system to exchange number of particles with the, the other members of the ensemble and come to an equilibrium uh, say now not temperature, temperature has already of course, it comes to an equilibrium temperature, but there has to be another equilibrium uh, quantity that should be established between our system and the surrounding and this is called as a chemical potential. So, now we will draw the same picture that we have drawn earlier. We have our system to be some A and this is to be A prime and this the whole system is um, A uh, 0 which is of course, isolated and this is characterized by energy E r uh, or say uh, just use this thing that uh, it is energy E s and number of particles to be N r. And um, uh, so, this uh, let us you know write it as E s and N r. So, which means that our system has uh, N r number of particles which are uh, occupying this E s energy level, whereas the A prime that has E s prime and uh, N r prime. Okay? And uh, again, E s is much, much smaller than E s prime or the total E 0 of the system E 0 is the total energy of A 0 and N 0 say for example, is the total number of particles that is there uh, which is again a constant. So, what we write is that uh, we write N r plus N r prime uh, is equal to a constant uh, which is say N 0 and we ha have to write that E r plus E r prime is again equal to E 0 and both are constants. Remember the first condition was not there in the canonical ensemble. Okay. N r is of course, a particular value for uh, these uh, uh, system to occupy our system to occupy this N r uh, number of uh, you know particles uh, in a given energy level E r. So, uh, this is so you can write this thing as E s and E s prime because we are using two different symbols one characterizing the number of particles other characterizing the energy of the system. Okay. And once again uh, these n r over n 0 is equal to 1 minus n r prime by n 0 uh, which is much smaller than 1 which we have seen earlier and E s over E 0 uh, is 1 minus E s prime uh, over E 0 which is again much smaller than 1. We will not do uh, an entire derivation, uh, but the derivation follows exactly along the same lines as the canonical ensemble and uh, you can rerun this derivation now with an additional. Uh, Lagrange's undetermined multiplier which you will introduce which is called as a chemical potential or the mu. Okay. So, uh, we ask this question that uh, what is the probability that uh, um, the system of mine or system of ours uh, which has n r number of particles occupies an energy state E s among all the possible available energy states of the problem. 
Now, uh, in order to do that, we will have to consider the number of microstates that are present that can be you know uh, available or that are um, uh, you know accessible for all the other members of the ensemble to be distributed uh, between these energy levels E s prime and uh, uh, this uh, this n r prime being the number of particles. Okay. The probability is P r s uh, which is proportional to the omega prime n r prime uh, e s prime. Okay. This has been explained uh, thoroughly when we did the canonical ensemble why this probability has to depend upon the number of microstates of all other members of the ensemble excluding our system to occupy these various energy levels. Because our uh, uh, system has only one microstate and the, all the other microstates are equally available to all the you know different members of the ensemble. And because these events are independent, so we multiply 1 by this uh, number which is omega prime uh, which is for the uh, system A prime to occupy n r number of particles among the available um, E s prime systems. So, what we do is uh, this is proportional to omega prime and uh, n 0 minus n r uh, and E 0 minus E s. So, in order to find this uh, probability what we do is that we take the uh, log of this and expand it about n 0 and E 0 which are constant quantities. So, we do do a log of P r s this is equal to a log of omega prime uh, n 0 minus n r uh, e 0 minus e s let me write it clearly e, e 0 minus e s um, and this is equal to if you expand it it is log of omega prime. So, we do a Taylor expansion. And to remind you what is Taylor expansion? Taylor expansion is f of x uh, expanded about x 0 the first term is constant and then you have a, a d f uh, d x or del f del x. Here we are talking about one variable. So, uh, it is ok to write this and then of course, there is half and d 2 f d x 2. Um, x at x 0 x minus x 0 square and this. So, depending upon situations we either chop off the uh, expansion at the first term that is uh, after the constant term or uh, in some cases where we are talking about equilibrium uh, then we uh, sort of go over to the second uh, term as well. Here it is ok to uh, chop it off at the first term. So, this is n 0 e 0 and plus a del l n omega prime del n prime uh, this is evaluated at n prime equal to n 0 and uh, minus uh, n r. So, this is that x minus x 0. Uh, so, this is n r and um, there is another term which is del l n omega prime del e prime uh, evaluated at e prime equal to e 0 and we have a minus e s. Okay. Uh, so, e uh, e prime equal to e 0 and so on. So, this is equal to minus uh, into minus e s. So, it is exactly the same thing apart from that there are two terms now which are variable both n and e and uh, this is nothing but equal to. So, this uh, log of this p r s I hope I have written it as p r s yes p r s. So, log of p r s is nothing but equal to if we uh, we are writing it almost equal to because we have ignored uh, the terms that are uh, higher order. So, it is a log of omega prime uh, n 0 e 0 which is of course, a constant and then there is a mu uh, divided by k t prime mu prime k t prime minus e s over uh, k t prime. 
uh, where we have defined already beta equal to del ln omega del E is a very familiar definition which is uh, in terms of the entropy uh, which is equal to minus 1 over k t you write uh, this evaluated at this uh, E prime equal to uh, E 0 like n prime equal to uh, n 0 and E prime equal to E 0. So, this E prime equal to E 0 and uh, of course, we also have a minus mu over k t um, which is nothing but minus beta mu uh, that is equal to uh, del l n omega uh, del n uh, evaluated at n prime equal to n 0. So, uh, we now have a constant term which does not make uh, uh, too much of difference it will just uh, when we uh, want to calculate PRS it will just be a constant and this constant would be absorbed when we uh, define the total probability to be equal to 1. So, the log of PRS is uh, like this. So, um, at equilibrium it is important to uh, understand that uh, there is no mu prime and t prime separately we have the uh, system our system will come to an equilibrium uh, chemical potential uh, mu prime equal to mu and t prime equal to t which means that or we write it uh, t prime equal to t. So, which means beta prime equal to beta. So, uh, if that is true then uh, we have uh, a log of uh, omega prime uh, E um, S prime n r prime is equal to log of omega prime n 0 e 0 and uh, uh, plus mu over k t uh, minus e um, s over k t. Okay. So, uh, there is a n r here which I have forgotten. So, there is a n r here and so this gives us that P R S uh, has this Boltzmann form or it is proportional to uh, E to the power minus alpha N R uh, minus beta E S and uh, in a normalized form we can write it as P R S is equal to exponential minus alpha N R and beta E S and divided by sum over R S exponential minus alpha N R minus beta E S where of course, your alpha is equal to minus mu over k t and beta equal to 1 over k t. Okay. So, these are the two uh, Lagrange's undetermined multiplier required for the constancy of the total energy and the total number of particles. So, you, you are allowed to assign uh, a particular number of particles to a given energy state but while assigning you also have to follow that the total energy and the total number of particle to be constant. So, uh, this is the uh, you know the sort of um, distribution uh, for the grand canonical ensemble. It is uh, almost same as the uh, canonical ensemble excepting that we also have uh, inside the argument of the uh, exponential we have a term which contains a mu. Okay. And if we want to know that how is this uh, uh, like this quantity which we have done earlier n r s that is how is this distribution how does this distribution look like that is assignment of particles in different energy levels. Uh, and uh, from our experience we know that uh, this uh, distribution which is nothing but equal to some uh, n factorial divided by this product of r s and n r s um, you know factorial. Uh, this gives you the 
the various number of ways that you can distribute NR particles in ES energy states. And this distribution is not a really a flat or a broad distribution. We know that uh, in order to uh, have uh, um, the experimental quantities as the say the pressure volume and temperature, this is really sharply peaked and uh, that uh, NRS uh, the most probable NRS for the thermodynamic limit. So, n going to infinity divided by n, it gives you this NRS star divided by n, again limit n going to infinity. This is nothing but the same distribution that we just saw minus alpha NR minus beta ES and divided by sum over R and S exponential minus alpha N R minus beta E S. I hope you appreciate that, uh, uh, that there are enormously large number of ways to distribute a number of particles, uh, certain number of particles in certain energy levels. However, uh, these among these uh, enormously large number of uh, I mean possibilities, there are only uh, the average possibility is same as the most probable prob uh, possibility which are given here because the average value of NRS is same as this NRS star. We have not done this derivation here, but we have done the derivation while we discussed canonical distribution, but the same as I said everything um, else follows through. This gives you the, uh, the distribution to be sharply peaked and um, these uh, distributions are very important for us. We just write down uh, the, the average number of particles and average energy um, and end here uh, this discussion and we will of course, uh, carry on with some examples of the uh, grand canonical. So, um, now you see that you are allowed to exchange number of particles uh, between your system and the surroundings or each of the members of the ensemble of the surrounding they can also exchange energy and number of particles. We still should be able to define average energy and average number of particles. This is an important uh, sort of understanding or concept that we need to imbibe here. So, this n is equal to R s n r exponential minus alpha n r minus beta E s um, and this is divided by sum over R s. Uh, exponential this probability of course, this Boltzmann probability. Just a definition stick to the basic definition that you are trying to calculate the average value of a quantity you weight it by its weight statistical weight which is here the Boltzmann term and uh, then you uh, divide it by the total probability which is of course, equal to 1. So, this is equal to minus del del alpha of uh, these log of uh, this R s exponential uh, minus alpha n r minus beta E s um, and uh, so this is uh, that partition function. So, we will uh, define this later as a grand canonical partition function just wait uh, till we uh, arrive at the next class for this. So, this is again R and S and E S uh, just exponential uh, minus uh, alpha N R minus beta E S um, divided by R S exponential minus alpha N R minus beta E S which also shares a similar relationship 
as the average number of particles. So, this average energy and uh, this is equal to log of sum over R s and exponential minus alpha n r minus beta e s and uh, we just mentioned that uh, this quantity now will be called as the grand canonical partition function. So, this is equal to um, this sum over R s exponential minus alpha n r minus beta E s and of course, alpha is equal to minus mu over k t and beta equal to 1 over k t. Okay? And just like what we have done for the uh, canonical distribution, we will use it in order to find uh, uh, or rather the k t log z will be related to a potential which we will call as a grand potential and this g is for the grand canonical. Okay. We will use this terminology um, and then we will use that in order to calculate various quantities that we are familiar with. So, we shall uh, stop here and carry on with uh, more discussions on the grand canonical ensemble. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.